Okay, so we can start working on our base golden material. And what I'll do first is to maybe first just darken this base one a bit more because we're going to use our second layer to lighten everything up. So duplicate this layer. I'll right click and hit duplicate layers. And I'll also just make sure to set it to a more brighter yellowish color. Add in, right click and add in a black mask. And in it black mask, right click and add in a fill layer. And we can definitely look for a lot of grunge or dirt maps. So let me try looking for a dirt one. So we have this dirt number four, and this is pretty good. We can definitely change our balance a bit and right click on this, add in a filter. And for this filter, just make sure to right click again and add in a blur slope. So you can just type it in blur slope and you should be able to have this one. Now change the intensity a bit so that it's blending in with the rest of the gun a bit better. But let's see. So I think I want the space to be a bit more rough and darker, like so. And for this one, I'll have it be a bit lighter so that we can have it stand out a lot more. So now we have a nice little blending and we can definitely change the balance of everything a bit more if you like. So for now, I think something like this is pretty cool. So we can definitely add in a second color variation. So I will just name this to color variation one. Color one, I guess. And I'll just press control C and V to copy and paste them. And for this one, I'll just switch the grunge texture to another one. Maybe to dirt number one. Let's see how it looks. And let me set it to a pretty strong color for now. So we have this bluish color and I like it quite a lot. But we definitely can turn the balance a bit lower and turn the contrast up. So something like this. And we can already just turn the opacity down for the bluish material so that we have some really nice looking color variations. So maybe for now, something like this would be pretty nice, but we can always just go back and change it if we need to. So for now, I'm pretty happy with this. We can start working on our second material. So for this black one, we're gonna do the same thing where we add in two different color variation. So I'm gonna just copy and paste this. I'm gonna right click, add in a black mask, and also just add in a fill to this one. Now I'll just change the color to something a bit more brighter, like so, maybe this reddish color, and just make sure that is a black mask and fill. And we can try whichever one we want. This time I'm gonna go a bit more random, maybe this grunge dirt splat. This one looks pretty cool. And we can do the same thing where we add in the blur slopes. Now, if you've ever watched Stylized Station, they definitely have a lot of really good tutorials on stylized texturing. So I would definitely recommend them when you have the chance. I'll just copy and paste this. And this one, I'll just change it to another one. So maybe this crunch spots, but this one will be a maybe a more greenish color. And we can definitely have some really nice color variation like so. So let's see, maybe instead of red, I can have it be a bluish tint like so. And one thing that is really important is to have some roughness variation. So let me just make sure to go over here to my golden material. And I'm going to just turn this to roughness. Now our base one is around point, let's set it to point 0.6. And the second one, I'll set it to maybe 0.5. And this one, I'll set it to around 0.45 or 0.46, I guess. And what it does, is that we'll end up with a lot of um, roughness variation and it's definitely useful to get a really nice and interesting result. And let me just maybe turn it a bit lower to maybe 0.3 and this one can be around like 0.4. So if I were to look at roughness now, it's definitely a lot more contrasted. So for this metal one, I definitely want it to be overall more rough than the golden one. So just make sure to turn, turn the roughness down a lot, one by one. 
until you have some clear darker spots as well as just a overall lighter one. Okay, so something like this is pretty cool. We can start working on our painted material. So I'll just click on this and I'm gonna just copy it over. First one, I'll just have it be a brighter color. And let me just hide this and I'll add a black mask to this. Right click on this and add in a fill. Just add in a grunge texture. Maybe we can try a this grunge dirt scratchy one. And it does look super um spotty. So we might have to pick one with bigger spots. Okay, I'll just try this for now. But we can just turn the scale down to something a bit lower, like 0.5, so that it's a bit bigger. And then I'm gonna just add in a filter and same filter, it'll be the blur slope. So we can have some cool little color variation. And I think overall, I want it to look a lot darker than what it is now, like so. And this one, I'll also just make it a bit darker as well. And I think by now, it would be a really good time to start adding in edge highlights. So go, go to your first material and just add in a fill. Make sure to add in a black mask. But for this one, make sure to add in a generator and set it to middle edge wear. So you see that we have it all around this. And the roughness needs to be lower than everything else because um, wherever you have edge wear is usually where you have everything the most smooth. So maybe something like this. And just change the color. Make sure that this one is also a metalish color. I mean a metalish material. Select the metal edge wear and we can just turn it down a bit so that it doesn't cover everything. So something like this is pretty cool. I'm just gonna copy this one and paste it into the dark metal one. And we don't want it to be the same one. We want it to be more grayscale. And just add a bit more color to it. Maybe this warmer color. And I'm pretty happy with this. So same thing, same thing with our painted pink one. And honestly, like on the edge wear, we should definitely have it still be metallic because it is um, probably just metal painted over. So something like this is pretty cool. And we can definitely add in just a second color variation. I'll just set it to maybe a yellowish color maybe. And then I'll just add in a black mask and a fill to the black mask. Okay, maybe something like this is a good start. Just turn the balance down quite a bit because we don't want it to appear too much, like so. And then we can add in a blur slope for this one. Now maybe, maybe a bluish, a yellowish color isn't too nice. So we can definitely just try to have some brighter pinkish colors. I guess for this one, we definitely need to have it be a different material. I'm just reducing the metal edge wear on this one a bit more. And for the cloth, I'm just gonna duplicate this whole pink, and pink painted material. But for the edge wear, instead of having it be metal, 
I'm gonna just set the mellowness to zero. And I'm gonna just make sure to clear, well, I guess remove the mask and just bring it in again. But I'll just have it only cover this one object. So for the edge wear, we definitely don't want it to be too much or too grungy. So turn a grunge amount all the way down. And we can have the color be something like this for now. Okay, so now we can work on the wooden material. And I believe we can just copy paste this. And I'm going to right click, add in a black mask, and add in a fill. And I hope they have a wood fill. So maybe this one will be a good start for now. Let me just try to turn the color up. So this is pretty nice, but it's tiling pretty big. So select this, right click, and for the scale, just turn it up a tiny bit. Maybe two, two round three has worked for me. And I'm going to just change the rotation until it's around point, well, I guess around 90 degrees. So this looks pretty cool. And I'll just turn the opacity down a bit because I don't want it to stand out too much. Okay, so that's pretty much it. The turret textured. I can definitely just change the color of this one, change the opacity of this one to be a bit brighter. And I think for now, I'm pretty happy with the texturing. So in the next video, we're going to bring it into Sketchfab. Oh, and before that, I actually want to just add in another occlusion layer. So I'll just copy paste this. But for this one, I'm going to just make sure to add in a filter and add in blur slope. Because I want there to be like this kind of nice little painterly effect on the occlusion areas. But make sure to just set it to multiply and to turn the contrast down a bit, quite a lot. Maybe around this is good enough. And we can definitely just turn down this one as well to just balance a bit. And I think I'm pretty happy with this. So thanks for following along. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.